And we're going to talk about life and love after death, because that is a real thing. And some of you are new to the whole idea. Some of you have been following this for a while. Some of you in our, in our, are in our academy. And I'm going to talk about the academy uh, at another time. And the only reason I'm not fully going into it is because, to be honest with you, we're not fully set up to take a whole flood of people in. But I, I am going to start talking about it with you in the next few days. Um, but for now, just hold tight, because a lot of you are new. So that's why we don't want to come at you. We're not, we're not here to really cram our services down your throat. Okay, we really are not. And yet, of course, we do offer them. So people always are asking me, but do you do readings? And you know, what else do you do? And I go, Oh, yeah, yeah, I have we have a book that will really help you. So that would be my first suggestion. And the book is posted all over the place in the group, you know, you can't miss the book. So I'd say if you want to learn what's possible, start with the book. That's why we wrote the book, really. Uh, we wrote the book with the intention that somebody could read that and find the support and the inspiration to do this on their own. And I've heard from some people, not everybody, okay, that they've done that, okay, that that was the purpose. So really, we're, our goal, because we know we can't work with every one of you, which is not impossible, our goal is to give you what you need. And if you feel like you need more, then you for sure have a one-on-one -on -one session with us. Join us in their academy. You can even join the academy right now if you don't understand what is this, because some people actually joined our academy that found us online, barely even got in here and said, I want that. <laughs> and signed up and they're loving it. So if you feel guided to do that, go do it. You know, um, I know everybody in Academy will say you'll not be sorry. So you can take a look on our website, supernaturallove.com and you'll see Academy. So take a look there. And if you feel guided to do that, great. And if you have questions about it, you know, let, let me know. You can always contact me at Pam at supernaturallove.com. Okay, if you have questions. But let's just get right into it because I have a lot to cover. And I try to keep my lives to about uh, 45 minutes. I usually, uh, often not successful. <laughs> I used to try to keep it at 30 minutes and that was impossible. So it's more 45 minutes, maybe 50. Occasionally I, I go to almost an hour, but I want to start really with welcoming everybody because we have a lot of new people here. And I just want you to know that you are in the right place. And everyone who's been here will tell you that, okay? I've been in this field, teaching spiritual development, doing psychic readings, channeling, not so much mediumship, Alan was a medium, although now he wants me to do mediumship and I've done, been doing some very fascinating mediumship sessions really with helping people who, especially partners, because there's issues that are lingering and you need some couple counseling. <laughs> International couple counseling. You need that for your, peop your people, okay? Because that's going to block your communication. That's going to block your ability to have the relationship. But I want to assure you that you absolutely can communicate with your loved one, whether it's a parent, child, certainly a partner, spouse, right? That is happening more with people every day. Alan says to me, it's because of the awakening happening on the planet. So more people are just becoming more sensitive. I'm sure you've noticed that on some level, or you've seen it with people around you. This is the time we're living in. Okay. So it's only going to get stronger. So you're going to find if you really focus on this, that it really isn't going to be that hard for you to start getting messages. The challenge is you're going to, if like, if you're like most people, you're going to doubt it and say, well, did they really say that? Did I really feel that? But I want to tell you first off that if you want this, you need to let that go. You need to understand where that doubt comes from and why you need to ignore it. Okay. And why it's not going to go away. Your doubt comes from your ego, physical mind, your conscious mind, right? It's created to be more fear-based, to only know what it already knows, to only know 
and understand the physical world. That's it. So it only, it's like a, it's like a computer that's only going to spit out what it was programmed with, right? You get it? Like, you understand the computer, right? Like, okay. So if it's garbage in, garbage out, right? Whatever the belief that's put in, that's what's going to come out. It's incapable of an inspired thought from the higher realms, from your higher self from the angels or from the divine, whatever. And we, I, I think most of you know that that is there, even if you don't understand it completely. But I think most of us will agree that the ego conscious mind is a source of a lot of pain and suffering, which it is because again, it's programmed with fear and it only knows what it's been programmed to know and believe, right? So that part of you is gonna doubt, it's gonna say, well, I'm making that up. But I'm here to tell you that it's possible, yes, that you're making something else. But when you've lost a loved one on the other side, like almost everybody here has, and they want to get through to you, they're not gonna let you very easily make stuff up. They're right here trying to like project their images, their messages, their emotions. Okay, I'm saying, especially their feelings, their love. Okay, they are, I mean, if you could see what I see, I'd go, oh my God, your room is so crowded. <laughs> They're all like, like there. And, and you're like, well, I don't know if I feel them. Um, I, I, and so when you say that, when you literally say, I'm not feeling anything, you're creating that reality through the thoughts that you're thinking. So if you want this, you got to cut that out. I'm going to be really like tough love here. <laughs> you want to feel your loved ones through the veil, you got to go all in and let that go. And why not? What do you have to lose? Who cares? Is anybody else going to know about this? No, this is between you and your loved ones in spirit. Nobody else's business. There's nothing to fear. Please don't listen to the people, especially some of you have come from Sean's group. Sean's my, my good friend. But that, that group, you know, right now, it's like a, Alan is saying, it's a clearinghouse. <laughs> of people fascinated by the supernatural. So some people there are just spouting, you know, demons and Satan, whatever. And we try to weed them out as moderators and, and we do, you know, but we can't get them all. So let go of that fear. You know, you've got to put that aside and trust your loved ones. So Alan wants me to, to emphasize this to you, for you folks starting out. This is my advice. This is what he told me when he came back to me, the first thing. I want you to focus on feeling my love. Forget about initially hearing me, although I did hear him. He said, that, that's fine. If you, you can hear me, that's fine. But first, I want you to feel my love because you will know that you cannot make that up. You cannot conjure love out of the ethers. If you could, then everybody would do that and they'd be living in heaven. So they go, oh, I feel right. When do people do that? Like, oh, I'm going to feel this love. And then, and then what else do you need? You know, but you can't, well, you can, but you're, you're stuck in that ego physical mind that is not programmed for that. That's going to go, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're here to take things seriously. This is the quote real world, right? So you've got to have this mind shift, okay, of, what is the real world? Because they're in the real world. We are not. That's one thing I really need you to grasp that you're, you're not in the real world. So just go all in. Okay? Because when you do that, when you're firm and you say things to yourself, like, I can easily hear my loved one. You can say their name, right? So me, it would be, I can easily hear Alan. I know I can feel, I feel Alan right? Whatever it is you're wanting to do. I, I, I would say focus on feeling them. Make that be your affirmation. I can feel Alan's love or I can hear him clearly. I can hear my husband. I can hear Alan clearly. And when you say that, you're actually creating that. You're creating that experience for yourself. So I want you to start understanding that you're manifesting through every thought you think. So when you think thoughts of limitation, like I can't do this, isn't real. That's what you're going to create the experience that it isn't real. 
The, the thing with this, what we do that's different is we teach a lot about the nature of reality and manifestation, because in truth, you can, through using affirmation and the power of your thoughts, you can create anything. You can even create this connection through the veil. In fact, he's saying to me, that's the only way you're going to create it. So if you don't believe that you can do that, if you don't think thoughts that align with that, if instead you think thoughts like, oh, this is impossible, this is crazy, I'll never do this, I, I can't, then that's what you're going to manifest, right? So he's saying to start there, to start getting your thoughts in all lined up, like in a row, that, okay, I, I believe in this. And if you feel the doubt come up, you feel little, you know, fear thing come up, realize that's your ego, conscious mind that's been programmed to not believe in this, right? You understand like most of society out there, they, they doubt this. They'll think they'll tell you you're crazy. They'll tell you that you're imagining it. Well, that's what you're up against. That's why you need to be in a group like ours where you'll never find anybody here telling you that you're making this up. You're never gonna hear anybody here tell you that it's impossible for you to do this. Okay, you'll have people here that are, are maybe struggling because they're not really experiencing fully yet, but they're getting, he's saying to me, they're getting little glimmers of it. They're getting, they're getting something. And the more you do that, the stronger it'll get. Okay, I, and I know there's lots of people that are in our academy who, if I ask them to, they'll raise your hand and go, yeah, me, me, that's happened to me. <laughs> like, and it's just about staying the course. So we're here to help you, whether you ever have a session with us or join our academy. And the reason I want as many people as possible to understand this and, and start reaching through the veil and healing their grief and knowing that their loved ones are always with them is because we're living in a time when that veil is supposed to come down. Literally, the two worlds are meant to become one. It was always a false construct to begin with. It wasn't supposed to be completely separate. In fact, Alan's telling me, reminding me of that in ancient times, there wasn't much separation. Humanity was more in touch with the spirit world. I think all of you can un understand that, right? If you look back in history, that there was more importance and significance. And, and it even what they even had seers that, that would predict accurately what was happening. I don't want to go down the whole road about predictions because that's a little bit more complicated right now in this day and age, but back then it was simpler. Right now it's a, it's a harder to say predict, but that's a, a lesson for another time. The main point I want to make is that start thinking positively that you can do this because your loved ones then can come in closer. If you don't, but you're basically showing me what you're basically doing is you're erecting like a uh, a fence around yourself, that those thoughts are creating like a fence, a barrier. And it makes it harder too, but because a lot of you are, are still in a lot of grief. So the grief, he says, more like adds like cement to that fence, right? Now you have a solid wall where it was just a fence that could be kind of peeked through or, or you know, there was, it was a little bit more porous, right? Than, than a solid concrete wall. Now you got this wall because you got your grief. So you got to process your grief. I, we're not saying that you have to, you cannot ignore that. You need to grieve. Understand that the grief is really your body. Okay. Your, I'm saying you're literally your physical body, which has a separate consciousness. It has its own consciousness, its own programming. And it's, it's perfect, it's designed the way it is. Your own body obviously misses your loved one physically, especially if it's a partner, but also if it's a mother or a child, because you probably hug them and kiss them and they're part of your life. But especially if it's a partner, it's even harder because you had a more intimate connection. So your body is, is yearning and saying, well, where, where are they? Like, where are they? I'm alone. And that's true on that physical level, but it's not true on a spiritual level. It's not true on an emotional level. They have dropped their body, but they're still here as a consciousness and they can engage with you. They can communicate with you. You can even, if you're a partner, you can even feel them viscerally and many people do. 
Kate. I, I do with Alan. I always feel him when I get in bed. So a partner for a partner, that's appropriate, right? Of course, for a family member, that wouldn't be. But I'm just saying that those of us who have partners will probably be able to more attest to that fact that there's physical contact of some sort, energetic contact. And some people actually feel physical, some sort of physical touch, or even like a weight, like feeling the weight, like on the bed. That happens a lot for people. They know like, well, my goodness, <laughs> he just sat on the bed <laughs> or a head, a head on the pillow, that kind of thing. What is that? We're not making this up. So you don't care what other people think. You're just proving this to yourself. Get your own proof. It's fine to read other people's stories. And I, I know there are people here sharing their stories that are in our group and in our academy and, and they will inspire you as what's possible. But you get your own proof. It's not enough to read. I promise you that. I, I've been a friend of Sean's for, we're going on three years now. And he's very much in the near-death experience community with IANS, the, you know, the... Um, so International Association for Near-Death Studies. And I was actually uh, uh, participating in their, the IANS after show in 2021. He interviewed me as after show. That was my second, my second summit that I did. But so I know that the near-death community is different. You know, they're looking for evidence, but those people have not necessarily lost a loved one. Alan was saying, of course, eventually they will. But for many of them right now, they're just curious, but it's a different focus. Okay, so they're looking for evidence, but you guys, if you've lost a loved one, you can get your own evidence. So don't be like, don't go down the scientific route. I mean, a little bit is fine to, to, to read, but, but you'll find evidence, so much evidence that you'll go, what, what am I thinking? Like, I'll just dive into this and then experience that. Direct experience is the way to really understand anything. I think we'd all agree. You can't read about riding a bike <laughs> to learn how to ride the bike. <laughs> you gotta jump on the bike and you might have to fall off a few times like most of us did and get back on the bike or maybe realize, okay, this bike doesn't work for me. I need a different bike <laughs> and go do that. But you got to act. And this is part, what I've been learning from the spiritual world, spirit world, is they said, you are physical beings. And so to do this journey, you have to act. You can't just read about it. You can't just listen to other people. You have to take action. So we're here to support you and teach you how to take that guided, loving action. Okay. And it's very simple. And I'm actually, they're, they're telling me to guide you through something that I want you to almost make like um, a regular thing. And it's really simple. It's so simple. You might go, well, is that all there is to it? And I promise you, you if you did this, what I'm going to teach you in a bit, because I've taught this before, and I'm, and I'm saying, and not everybody keeps it up, but it is this simple. Because again, in the physical world, it's about action, action, repeated action. And then you're, you're like building the connection. You're just, you're just, he's saying, he always told me, it's like laying down the railroad track. To for the, so that the train that is your relationship can run, but you got to lay down the track first. So start with your beliefs, that your beliefs are all in alignment, that you let go of fear. If you feel fear come up, ignore the fear, do it anyway. And talk to, okay, he's saying to me, if you feel the negative thought come up or the fear, be proactive. Don't just feel it and go, oh no, I can't do that now. Say, talk to yourself and say, well, that's silly. Other people are doing this. I can do this. Of course I can do this. Because then you start counteracting your negative fear thoughts by saying or thinking it to yourself. Literally, it will shift your state. Okay, so don't let yourself slide into this negative state. Take, pull yourself back from the edge. Say, of course I can do this. Look, these other people are doing this. I'm going to give it a try. What could I lose? This feels good to me. I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to see for myself. I'm not going to buy what everybody else says. I'm going to see for myself. Either I will do this or I won't, but I won't know until I go for it. So why not? I can't get hurt. So do that. Get your thoughts in a row. Realize, okay, I've got to form some sort of practice. I promise you that I'm not making it complicated for you. It's as simple as this. All right. First, you want to be sure you're in a relaxed state. 
whether you, you could do a meditation, great. Um, we There's many ways to meditate. If you find trouble meditating, there's guided meditations. You can find things on YouTube. I will, I will post um, some more suggestions and resources separately. I don't know if I'll do it in this, probably, well, maybe here and in, a, in another post, but there's a lot of great ways to meditate. Okay, just find something that works for you. You can certainly ask other people, but you might be different. You might find that what works for somebody doesn't work for you. So on YouTube, there's like, like, a, like there's crystal bowls, right? With the nature sounds. That's what I've been sleeping to for the past week or two. And it just puts me right out, but it can also be used for meditation, for example. Okay. Anything that gets you into a relaxed state, but here's the simplest way that I, that I practice right now. But again, deep meditation, if you need that, want that, go for it. If you feel like, well, I want something simpler, then I would suggest you simply repeat the words, I am, to yourself. I am. What you're saying when you say I am, is you're saying that you are God, or creator, source, universe, all that is. Some of you are not comfortable with the word God. That's fine. We're talking about the collective the one energy that we're all part of, whatever you want to call it is your choice. But you are that, that that is God, the oneness, the all that is, but you're also the part that is God. This is the hardest part to comprehend spiritually, that you're everything and you're this one thing, both. You're this individual that will never lose their consciousness, their personality, their, their beingness. Okay. You will never lose that. So you're individual and yet you're also one. Okay. So it's two. So when you can start really feeling into that, then you're, you halfway there, but I know it takes a little while. So when you say I am, or you could say, I am one with all that is, it starts to go into every cell of your body. Those were every, every thought you think creates so when you repeat that, you're basically seeding that thought into every cell of your body and your body starts to relax. I know this works and I've told the story before. I'll talk quickly because a lot of new people, when I was in, in a dentist chair and they were doing, removing fillings and they put that rubber dam in my mouth, I started to freak out and had a panic attack for the first time in my life. And I thought I was going to scream and rip the thing out of my mouth. And my guides told me, because thank God I was already open <laughs> psychically. And they said, just repeat. I am one with all that is. At that time, this is what's important. I want to tell you that statement, I am one with all that is, that's what I was repeating to myself when I would go into a channeling state and talk to my guides. So they told me to repeat that. So as soon as I repeated it, I relaxed. Instantly, I relaxed and I, the panic attack was gone. So I know that if you say that, I am one with all that is, or I am one, or I am, you will start to relax. Now, once you relax, you feel like you're thoroughly relaxed and you're not going to be disturbed. You're going to call out to whoever it is in the spirit world that you want to talk to, who it is that you want to communicate with, right? You call out to them aloud or in your mind. If you want to see them in your mind, that's great. It's not necessary, but you can. If you can imagine them in your mind, you're doing that. But I promise you that they hear you. So when you call it to them, all right, you want, then you start relaxing and expecting that you're going to perceive something. Now, what that something is, I cannot tell you what that'll be, but you're going to notice whatever happens next, whether it's a word that comes to your mind or a feeling, right? Or you start sensing something physically, like you get tingles or you feel a coolness come over you or you smell something that is not supposed to be in the room, that's unusual. Anything that happens next is them. I want you to assume that that's them and go with that. And if it's, let's say, words that start coming, just go with it. Don't start thinking to yourself, I'm making it up. Just go with it. Just go with it and let it play out. Okay, until you feel like, oh, it's done or it's over. Or I'm not feeling that anymore. I'm not hearing the message anymore, or I'm not sensing or seeing what was there anymore. Then you, you stop. Okay. 
then you own that. You don't like dismiss it and go, well, that was weird. <laughs> you, if possible, write that down, what you experienced. When you write something down, you're anchoring, anchoring it into the 3D world by you writing it down. And you also gonna remember it because when you do this, you were going to be going into a light trance state. So you're not gonna remember it all. So I promise you, you'll come out of this and say, oh, I'll remember that. There's no way I'm gonna forget that. And I promise you by the next day, you're gonna forget what happened. You're gonna forget what the message was. You're, you're gonna forget pieces of whatever the experience was. So writing it is a good way of keeping that record it also means, Alan saying to me, also says to spirit world, I mean business. I, I want this to grow. I'm taking this seriously. And so the more you take note, in fact, a lot of teachers of spiritual development will tell you to keep like a little notepad, literally, and to write down any strange thing that happens that seems like weird to you. Like I found, you know, I found a feather <laughs> like on the ground, like, and there, there's no, birds in my house, like, why is this feather in my bathroom, right? So things that are anomalous, like what, this is weird and messages you get, okay? Because he's saying, you doing that is saying to the universe, I'm paying attention, I'm listening, I'm noticing, send me more, okay? If you don't do that, you're basically saying, I'm not paying attention. Your actions matter, right? Spirit they have said this to me, and I've heard other spiritual teachers say this time and again. They're going to give you guidance. And if you do not act on the guidance, you won't get more until you take that guidance. They'll take, give it to you, like he's showing me, like, like you know, bit by bit. Like he's showing me it like a mother bird feeding her baby bird. Here's that piece of food. I'm not going to give you more until you eat that one. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to choke. So they're only going to give you something else if you act on what you already got. So pay attention, know that the way the universe, your guides, even your loved one are communicating with you, not just through like talk, through feeling, through emotions you're getting, like positive emotion is a sign from your higher self. It can be a sign from your loved one saying, yeah, do that. This is good, let's do this. So you feel excited, you feel curious, you feel interested in something. That is a form of guidance. That is your higher self. It doesn't always come. He's saying like in a loud booming voice, you know, um, <laughs> do this now. <laughs> it would be so much easier if it did, right? If it was so obvious, like, oh, that's my guides. You know, they're yelling at me <laughs> and I hear them clear. No, spirit communication is subtle. I'm not saying it can't be loud, but that's usually like only when it's really urgent. Like the time Alan threw the, the word in my head, like, like urgent care. I go, what? I have to go to urgent care. I didn't realize I was, I was having a problem. And I go, are you sure? I thought I was making it up. So I call my friend who can hear him. And she goes, yes, he wants you to go to urgent care. Now I do too, because I'm worried. <laughs> go to urgent care but they can do that, okay? But that's not gonna be typical. He's saying, because would you like it if you're going about your day and you get these words thrown into your head and you go, oh, what was that? And what was that? And what was that? And it would, it would throw you off. And he says, we want you to live your life as seamlessly and easily as possible. So, so our communication will often be subtle and gentle, but it'll be there and it'll get stronger. Okay, I promise you'll get stronger. And even if you keep saying to me, you, in the beginning, you might feel like you're getting dribs and drabs of it, right? Like just a little piece of communication. But again, if you act on that and say, okay, I believe that, um, I trust that, you'll get more because you're pro reprogramming your own subconscious, which is new to this. It's going, huh, what are we doing? <laughs> What is this we're doing? So as you're affirming through your action and your positive beliefs, then your subconscious is relaxing going, okay, well, this, this seems good. Like I can go along with it. So it'll get stronger. Okay. My communication with Alan is so much more complete now than it was in the early days. And I was hearing him. I was hearing him. But now it's like, I know when his thoughts really merge with mine and I, if there's a flow to it, and I know you will find your own rhythm with your loved ones on the other side. 
Okay, so it just takes time. So you're in the right place. We talk about this all the time. We'll talk about it in the future. People that are with us know that we come back, circle around and come back to the topic again because we need to repeat it because this is not stuff that you're going to be hearing one time and say, I got it. It's not because you are literally reprogramming your consciousness. Now, I want to also point out that this journey has the potential to transform you spiritually and emotionally too, to really upgrade you as a being. It is part of your spiritual path to awaken, to be who you, all that you are. And our loved ones in spirit, I know because I talk to them, you know, I talk to Alan and I talk to them when I work with clients, they want that for us because they know, they say, why should you wait till you die to step into all that you are? Like they're saying, I wish I was all that I am now when I was in a body. I didn't know it was fully possible. But now, yeah, I would like my, my loved ones to do that so that they could be more powerful, be more confident, be all that they are, you know, be, be who they truly are. Because many people are living kind of a very, let's say, narrow version of themselves because they're fitting into a box or trying to make please everybody or they're not sure who they really are, what they really want. But your loved one is like trying to lead the way and certainly your guides. Uh, you'll find, okay, Ellen wants me to say that you'll find being with us, you're going to find that your, your, your guides are going to come forward a lot more because we work with you on that level too. We don't talk about that so much, but that is something that's going to happen. You're going to find yourself being guided by your, what I call your spirit team. So we can talk about that another time. We talk more about that a lot of times, maybe in the academy, go a little bit deeper on a lot of these conversations. Basically think of it like this, what we're doing in the academy is we, like the things we talk about right now in these lives, we will cover again, but we would go deeper in the academy and we'll actually, and we coach people like, um, and my academy people are on here right now, don't know this, but I'm going to tell them right now, they're paying attention. We're going to go back to coaching two times a week. And there's a reason for that because we're going to offer coaching that's in right now, the same time right now, or maybe earlier Tuesday, I'm not sure yet, but on a Saturday as well early so that people who are off on the weekends but can't come on a weekday can come on Saturday and who people who are in Europe who we are too late for them right now can come on a Saturday or if you miss it because you couldn't come on Tuesday and I can come on Saturday that kind of thing okay so we're going to talk about the academy but what what our academy really is is more like live coaching like this I'm doing right now but longer like 90 minutes two hours like mini readings, like, you know, we, we don't care if you ever pay for us for a week. <laughs> we are here to help you to bring, do everything we can. And we're going to make the academy affordable. Like we give scholarships, we're creating kind of a, in a way, a scholarship fund. So we take donations. We're setting all that up. That's what I'm saying. We're not fully pushing that out there, but you can join now. You can join now if you want to. Or you can wait because on, I don't have the date yet, but later in July, okay, hold, Alan's saying hold off. We need to hold off on launching fully because uh, a few of you know, just a few of you know, we, we just have some opportunities that are coming forward that I want to sit in place first before I figure out what we're doing because we have the potential to take our, mis our message to a broader audience and help more people. So I have to balance that out. That's why I, I know that's why I haven't fully launched the Academy yet. But again, if you want to join us, we're not pushing it. You can go to the website, Supernatural Love, look for Academy. And if you have questions, let me know. But, um, but that's what it is. The Academy is really live coaching. And Alan's saying, you guys understand that there are, he doesn't know any spiritual teacher who's teaching live twice a week, like every week. All right, you get pre recorded stuff from these people. Okay, or one person I know she charges $333 for her program and she teaches for two hours once a month. Okay, so we are giving you everything we got and, and we're making it affordable. So if you think you can't afford us, you're crazy. Like, like come, come talk to me because 
you're living in another dimension because nobody's going to can give you what we're giving you. And I'm not bragging. That's just fact. That's just fact. Okay. So we're only getting started. So we have 35 years experience. I'm a channel, Alan's a medium. He says we're both. And, and I've always been able to hear spirit give me the answer when somebody asks a question. But usually it's a question, okay, that's not necessarily mundane. It can be, but usually it's about the nature of reality. And I hear, like they show me, this is how the reality works, or this is the truth about this subject, or this is how past life regression really is, or this is what past lives really are. And then I, I hear it or I say it, and then I read it sometimes elsewhere where somebody else is saying the same thing. And because I can feel it in my body, that's the thing. I will hear the truth and it's like, I can feel it like a shockwave in my body and I'll go, oh, that's true. Or I read it and I go, whoa, that's true. That's how I have always, they've always taught me. And I want to transfer that ability to you. And Alan goes, if you stay with us long enough, you will <laughs> get that because we project all of that to you. He's, he's laughing, he's going, we're just magicians. <laughs> He was always into magic. He was an alchemist. So, all right. So I want you to practice that, okay? And it doesn't have to take long. If you have a long time to do it, sure, go for it for half an hour, an hour, whatever. But meditate or do that I am, one with all that is, or whatever it is that gets you into a deep, relaxed state. Then call out to your loved one, or it could be your angels or guides, whoever in the spirit world you want to talk to. And, and feel them, you can ask them a question. He's saying, remember, this is interactive, you know, but to start with, let yourself feel them. And if it's a partner or, or any loved one, please focus on, okay, I want to feel your love because the reason he focused on doing that with me, he says, if you feel my love, I know that's going to start to heal your grief because I can't give you my body, but I can always give you my love. And you will feel it as a tangible thing because it is. It's the only thing that's real, that's everlasting. So when you open up and it's hard when you're grieving, I get it. But that's why I say cry because he told me to cry, cry, cry until I couldn't cry anymore. And then he say, okay, now you have a little opening. I can feel my love. And he would like literally like blast me with love and I'd go, this is crazy. I'm crying. And then I feel this love, like crying and then love, like crying and then love, but I was making space, you see. So you could do the same, like practice that. And just know every time you cry, think of it this way. Every time I cry, I'm, I'm releasing the pain and making room for the love. And also because when you're grieving, you're releasing pain, not just from the loss of your loved one, but any loss you ever had. It really affected you. That's what grief does. It, it dredges up the past, like all the trauma, all the hurt, it all starts coming out so that, and it needs to, so that you can then more be vibrationally aligned with your loved one. Could you be a higher, you don't have to be at this high, high vibration. I just mean high enough, close enough that it's easier for you to connect, but it's not about you being perfect. Helen is saying you already are perfect. You just don't realize it. Once you do realize it, then you are, but you got to own that. But right now you're just not quite there yet. So I, I know there are people commenting in the chat that I'm not paying attention to because I'm watching the door. <laughs> so I can't, I can't see what you guys are saying because I'm trying to keep track of what's going on. But, and so I know people are saying, sharing their experiences. So it, whether you're in this group or you join our academy, you will have support. Okay, you will have support and we're here for you. We can just do more for you in the academy because we've got more time with you. I mean, literally this is just time. I will also in the academy, we're going to have classes periodically like workshops in depth periodically. We will be doing a channeling training. Again, I can't pinpoint the date yet because I'm trying to get other things on my calendar. We've just had so much happening because of Sean's group, because he had invited me to be a moderator a couple of weeks ago, and then his group exploded. So, and it's making our group explode, which is fine, because that's what we're here for. But, um, but do us, if you can, you don't have to, you don't, you, 
I'm up for it, totally get it. But if you feel guided to feel comfortable doing so, if you see anybody in that group, especially because there's so many grieving people coming through the doors, if you see anybody that's lost that, that feel, you feel like could benefit from being here, just drop a line there and say, you know, say, hey, join this group, soulmates in the afterlife. It's helping me if you can because people then thank me. They go, I'm so glad, how did I find? I have so many people have told me in the past, I don't know how I found your group, but I'm so grateful I found it. Because the other grief groups, it's just depressing, <laughs> right? I've been in them. It's like, it, it, most, most people leave because they, it's too depressing to be around people who are depressed and there's no way out. This is the way out, okay? The way out, is to realize they're not bad because they're not and that we can communicate. It will take time. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. For some of you it could be really fast. It depends. Depends on you, you know, your belief system, your willingness to go all in and trust. Even if you feel those pangs of doubt, it depends on your loved ones. If they're ready to, it's not because they don't love you because they always love you. It's like whether they ready. Some people, when they cross over they're they're still not completely, let's say, settled in, for lack of a better word, but they will be. So there can be a lot of reasons why you don't get, you know, them reaching through right away. I will, pro I promise you, Alan is helping them. I promise you he's helping them. He's helped, he's saying he's helped everybody in the academy and he's helped people in this group that never joined our academy, that never had a session with us. I know because people have told me they said I could feel Alan around me, or I know, or or my husband, my partner told me that he helped them. Okay, so I know it sounds really surreal. Like what? This dead guy is helping is helping my loved one in spirit. But he said that was his his mission. He said our mission our mission was for me to work with you folks in this this dimension, right? The physical, and and he was helping on that side with your partners, your family members, okay, on the other side. And that's what he had trained for as a psychic medium and a spiritual teacher. And he says, that's what I trained for too, but I just didn't know it at the time. So we're working both sides of the veil. I don't believe there's anybody doing what we're doing. And again, I'm not bragging. If somebody's found somebody doing, I mean, two, two souls on both sides of the veil, please let me know, because I want to meet them. <laughs> I really do. I want to meet them and say, congratulations, let's, let's share notes. Okay. But I don't believe there's anybody. They're sure there are mediums teaching, but not a medium who has another medium in the spirit world. Okay. So if you have questions, let us know. We're going to come. We'll be here again. We'll be talking again. And even though next week, Tuesday is 4th of July and most of my, uh, the people I, my friends who are spiritual teachers or even just you know, uh, people who have Facebook groups like mine are taking a vacation. We don't, we're not taking that vacation. We'll be here on 4th of July. And if you want to join us here, we will be here talking to you again, because we know right now, a lot of you are, are just grieving and it's hard and holidays are hard. So a lot of times when other people take breaks on holidays, we often are, that's when we come through strongest. Cause we know sometimes that's hard, like, like Christmas. I, I don't, usually take Christmas. So I might be off somewhere on a holiday, but I'll still get online and be talking to you because I know that holidays are tough. But as long as you're in our group, they won't be as difficult, okay? Because you will have support. And I pledge that until like, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> That's the only time when I, or if I'm sick, I, but I'm really sick. But anyway, we welcome you here. I'd like you to practice what I just suggested or your own form of meditation. But when you call them in next, trust what happens. It is that simple. It is that simple. Alice is suggesting that you do this at least for a week to show yourself, Kate, okay? and to then to take note of what, what occurred, right? When you did your guided centering, relaxation, your meditation, whatever you do. And then when you call that to them, and if you ask them to tell you something, you ask the question, whatever you notice, you write down what you happened, you note down what happened, keep a record of it for a week and see how you went. And then let us know, let us know, post it in the group. Okay. I did the homework, Pam. This is what happened. I will try my best to tell you what I think <laughs> if you do the work. 
you do the work and you post it in the group and say on day one, day two, day three. <laughs> and other people here will probably go, that's cool. That happened to me too, or, or I experienced this, right? So you, when you talk about spirit communication, you're gonna get spirit communication because that's how manifestation works. The more you talk about something, the more you create it, you're seeding it, okay? So I want you to start thinking about it, talking about it, looking at, you know, movies about it. Maybe I know some movies are kind of flaky, but, but uh, I don't know why he's showing me. He knows that one of my favorite movies is Always with Richard Dreyfuss and Holly Hunter. And even before Alan passed and I watched that movie the first time, it, I cried and cried at the moment in the movie where Richard Dreyfuss', Dreyfuss character is, is talking to her. He's in spirit and he's talking to her and she's crying. And I don't know why it moved me so much. And I go, why am I crying? Like, <laughs> and then now I realize, well, that happened to me. <laughs> That's not gonna happen to me. I'm being talked to by somebody in the spirit world telling me how much he loves me. And, and many people are having that experience. Okay, so you're not alone. People are reaching out to us all the time. who are saying, I'm having this communication. I thought it was going crazy. You know, I thought it was nuts. And so it's a real thing. So even if you're not having it yet, and you're not one of those people, what does that mean? It means it can happen to you. You don't have to wait like these other people just spontaneously had all this contact. You can say, well, I want to initiate. And the other side will reach you halfway. Okay, it's meeting them halfway. So we're going to wrap it up for today. But you can drop questions. And please take the homework assignment seriously and, and share in the group. And if you do share it, be sure to tag me. Otherwise, I won't see it. You can do a separate post. I'll try to get to it. I might not get to everybody right away, but I'll do my best to get to it and let us know. And okay, so Alan's saying, so remember then, guys, that means seven days. That means what, next week, Tuesday, or maybe next week, Monday, you say, well, this is what happened for me. Okay, so welcome. I hope you feel like this is your new family because we feel that way about you, that your loved ones and you are part of our family, right? So we love you, we're here for you, we wanna help you, we wanna bring down the veil and we can't do it without you. Without you and your loved ones in spirit. Alan says the spirit world is behind this. They absolutely are. They're the ones that have been working hardest at bringing down the veil. And that's why they've been connecting with people who were completely caught by surprise. Like, what? <laughs> What's happening to me? Because they're, they've always been initiating it. Okay, and that's not time for us to just, just go with it. Okay, so go all in, you're perfectly safe, right? Promise you, and if you have questions along the way, myself and others in the group will be happy to answer, okay? So love to all of you. We're just gonna say goodbye and, and we'll talk to you next time. Thank you so much for, for being here. And I'm so sorry, I couldn't look at any of the chat. I'll go look at it later, you guys, because it's recorded. And if there's something really important, I will, I will reply to it. Otherwise, until next time. Okay, aloha from Honolulu, from both Alan and myself. Bye-bye, bye all of you.